Early on in the pipeline for EOD Tech, Navy Diver, and the HM ATF job of Diving Medical Technician, there is a selection phase of training that takes place in Great Lakes, Illinois. Directly after boot camp, candidates are marched across the street and into perhaps the most failed portion of their respective training pipeline. Newly minted E1 through E3s, as well as some fleet returnees, report to the Center for EOD and Diving, or CIOD for short. Mislabeled as a preparatory course, CIOD has an average overall failure rate that hovers around 50 to 55 percent. Historically, this has been due to two main event groups. AAs and IWPs. In this video I'll discuss the aquatic adaptabilities AAs as well as the in-water proficiencies or IWPs. Additionally I'll show you a third evolution responsible for the most volunteer DORs at SEAT. Spoiler alert it involves flooded masks. I'm Jake and this is my no frills channel Brass Tacks. If you want to skip ahead at any point Use the chapters in the progress bar below. Also, in order to know when I upload new videos like this one, simply hit the subscribe button followed by the notification bell. AAs, or Aquatic Adaptabilities, are a group of events that are meant to test a candidate's water comfort level. A student must be able to remain calm enough to make clear decisions while in the water and under stress. Water comfort is the single most important factor to ensure success. A lack of it guarantees failure. First up of the AAs, we'll look at drown proofing. A student is required to test their water comfort by treading with ankles bound and hands secured behind their back. The ankles are tied together while the hands must be voluntarily held in place gripping a piece of gear such as a snorkel. Quite different than the bobbing done at BUDS, this is a treading evolution. Candidates may not touch the bottom of the pool. An additional testing nuance that candidates don't expect is the proximity to other students. The difficulty of trying to access air and stay on the surface of the water compounds as more and more swimmers are added to the mix. Next up is the Ditch and Dawn evolution. A mask and snorkel will be placed in the deep end of the training tank by the instructor staff. Once it is in place, you will take a breath and swim to the deep end, making sure to stay parallel with the bottom surface of the pool. As you descend, locate and don the staged mask and snorkel. After satisfactorily clearing the mask, you will calmly surface. Once on surface, you must clear your snorkel before removing your face from the water. Underwater Knot Tying Another test of a candidate's aquatic adaptability is the underwater knot tying evolution. The primary objective is to tie the prescribed knot on either the manifold of a scuba rig or a highway line. After successfully tying the square knot, you will untie it, resurface, and prepare to repeat the process, but with a bowling knot. Porpoising The next aquatic adaptability test is called porpoising. You will be given fins and a snorkel, but no mask. As you swim laps around the pool's perimeter, you and your classmates will fall into the pattern of Descend to the bottom of the pool, ascend calmly, clear the snorkel before breathing, and descending again. Some candidates find it next to impossible to keep water from running up their noses and down to the back of their throat. This leads many students to DOR. IWPs Once all AAs have been secured, Candidates will move on to in-water proficiencies. After entering the water, you must stay on surface as well as within six feet of your dive buddy at all times. This is made difficult as the tanks on your back are steel dummies, 
and combined with the belt about your waist, the total negative weight averages around 16 to 18 pounds. You will then go through a series of gear checks. These are the gear checks that you'll use for the rest of your diving career. You and your dive buddy must execute these with speed and precision in order to keep the energy and leg strength required to complete the time tread that occurs at the very end of IWPs. Over unders. Though not a pass fail evolution, the event that boasts the highest DOR rate is without a doubt the over under. Your class will be split into half, each on either side of the deep end. Once everyone is in the water, you will be told whether your group is to go over or under. The under group will descend, touch the bottom corner of the pool, and swim to the other side. Once you've reached the other side, touch the opposing bottom corner before ascending slowly in a controlled fashion. The instructor staff will then prepare your class to begin again. You will repeat this for an extended period of time. While over-unders are a kick in the pants, it's the escalation tactics used by the instructors that have so many candidates throwing in the towel. The addition of uniform garments as well as the introduction of charged masks makes this simple exercise unbearable for many. This leads most of them to exit the pool and the program, but of their own volition. I hope this video has helped you. Subscribe now and hit the notification bell to be alerted when I upload more videos just like this one. Also, comment below with which one of the evolutions you anticipate being your Achilles heel. How are you training to mitigate it? I'm Jake and this is Brass Tacks. Until next time, train smartly.